guys, I'm Angeline, and this is your Game of Thrones episode recap. Just when I thought nothing could have topped last week's episode, the new episode I saw Sunday night blew me away. Let's run through this, shall we? The start of Sunday night's episode begins when we see a chopped hand hanging and bouncing off the chest of Jamie Lannister, as he and Brienne are still taken prisoners by the men of House Bolton. Jamie manages to steal a sword and put up a fight. But not having two hands comes to a disadvantage for this Kingslayer, as the Bolton men manage to outnumber as well as disarm him. Brienne tries to help Jamie, but just the same, she's outnumbered and with no weapon. Later in the evening, Brienne and Jamie have a chit chat, as Brienne puts Jamie in check, informing him that he's never had a taste of the real world until now, and that she sees him, you know, as someone that just easily gives up and cries like a woman. Boo hoo. Anyhow, Brienne comes to call out Jamie as she tells him that she knew he saved her life with the House of Taw sapphire bit with the leader of House Bolton. She asks Jamie why he saved her. Jamie's quiet, and then we can somewhat assume that some sort of friendship maybe will turn out. Sort of, maybe, maybe not. In Craster's Village, the brothers of the Night's Watch hold a funeral for one of their fallen men. All hell breaks loose when one of the brothers tells Craster how shady he is for not sharing his food and he calls him a bastard. Yeah, he even added some other mean and nasty words, which we're not gonna say, but easy to say, Craster goes crazy. And so does the other man arguing with him as he kills Craster. And one of the other men from the Night's Watch kills Lord Mormont. Yes, Lord Mormont. I was so mad when that scene happened, you know? Anyhow, Sam does what he does best. He runs away. But this time, in a heroic way, he takes Gilly and her newborn son along with him. In King's Landing, Lady Marjorie and Joffrey's relationship grows as Joffrey shows her the historic torture places in the castle. How romantic. Marjorie plays with Joffrey using words to get him to sway in her ways. And of course, Mommy Dearest sees this. Cersei tells her father Tywin about this and Tywin tells Cersei, hey, it's a good thing that at least Marjorie can control Joffrey more than she can. Well said, Tywin. Yeah. Oh, and does anyone have any clues to what's going on with Theon? I mean, first the badass archer saves this guy's life, twice by the way, and then he tricks Theon and takes him back to the torture room in the dark castle. Someone help me out here, please? Lastly, we're taken to Astapor where Daenerys is finalizing her deal for the Army of 8,000 with Master Krasnys. Once Daenerys' new handmaiden, Masandi informs her that the deal has been made, Daenerys flips the script as she starts speaking Master Krasnys' language, Old Valyrian. Clearly, we all knew Danny had a plan in her, but the fact that the language Krasnys was speaking this whole time was Valyrian definitely was a nice surprise. The nicer surprise was when Danny orders her new army to slay their masters, the soldiers, and any man holding a whip in Astapor. As for Krasnys, one word, Dracarys. Once the killing is all over, Danny tells all of her new soldiers that they are free men. And yet at the same time, she asks them to fight for her as free men. And surprise, surprise, they do. So, danny has got her army of 8,000 men who love her, adore her, and will fight for her. She's got her council of Sir Jorah, Sir Barristan, and Missandei. And yes, all three of her dragons. A great ending from this past Sunday's episode. Definitely my fave by far. Until next time, I'm Angeline, and that was your Game of Thrones episode recap. Thanks for watching.